Three years ago, just a couple of months after arriving at Caltech, I got a bad phone call from home. My mother told me that thanks to her annual screening, we caught a tumor in a relatively early stage. Nevertheless, in addition to the biological treatment and the surgery, the doctors recommended chemotherapy. She already had online about all the terrible side effects of this treatment. She was very anxious and asked me if I've heard about any alternative. There must be a better way of doing this than pumping people full of these terrible chemicals, she told me. Unfortunately, after a second and third opinion, I had to tell her that this is still the standard of care. One year later, the cancer was gone. The side effects of this treatment linger to this day. If you ever seen somebody that you care about suffering through chemotherapy, you don't need me to tell you about the main problem of today's anti-cancer therapeutics. Every different type of cancer treatment targets some unique aspect of cancer cells in order to destroy them. However, it's frequently impossible to target only cancer cells without harming some healthy tissue. And so we end up either not killing all of the cancer cells or causing significant damage to the rest of the body. Sadly, we often end up doing both. In our lab at Caltech, we believe in a different therapeutic tomorrow. You may have heard about immunotherapy and the promise in engineered white blood cells. This is only one type of cell therapy. Cell therapy is an emerging therapeutic approach that tackles the problem of fighting cancer by engineering cells to act as secret agents. Much like James Bond, a secret agent cells can complete complicated operations within our body and try to save it from the evil cancer cells. These cells can be programmed to home to tumors, sense the environment, and release anti-cancer drugs locally. However, much like Agent Q in the James Bond movie, it's up to us, the engineers, who deploys these cells to give them all the right tools and intelligence to successfully complete their mission. Let me take you with us to the labs of the Q division. Here you can see synthetic biologists working hand in hand with physicists in order to develop complicated gadgets for our agents. As you can imagine, planning and commanding such a complex top secret operation is not easy. You see, much like James Bond, a secret agent cell can sometimes get distracted. For example, some small portions of our therapeutic cells can lose their way and end up in the liver instead of the tumor because of some attractive biomolecular signal that they encounter. However, none of us wants to risk hurting any innocent bystanders, especially when there are our own healthy liver cells. Moreover, we need all the agents on our team to work together in harmony in order to complete the task of fighting cancer instead of chance of beating this terrible mastermind. To do it successfully, we need a way of communicating with our troops and controlling their actions. In order to help us communicate effectively with our microscopic agents, our lab at Caltech is developing non-invasive technologies for controlling therapeutic cells activity within the body. It's not easy to reach our agents when they're hidden among a multitude of cancer cells, but luckily we have nature on our side. Our approach is based on gas-filled protein nanostructures called gas vesicles. In nature, gas vesicles are used by many photosynthetic bacteria to regulate their flotation within water. When there's not enough sunlight, they can use the gas in order to float upward. When the sunlight is too strong, they can deflate it and dive deeper. It just so happens that the gas inside these vesicles make them excellent outer sun contest agents. By taking the genes responsible for producing gas vesicles and implanting them in our therapeutic agents, we can make them visible to ultrasound. So when we transmit an ultrasound wave deep into the tissue, the air inside these vesicles function as a pitting device, reflecting the wave back to us with a response. We're here and we are ready. At this point, we know that we successfully establish a network of sleeper cells within a tumor. These cells can sense the environment and tell us things about the tumor microenvironment. However, frequently, gathering information is not enough and we need to take action. So, in my postdoctoral project, my colleagues and I have developed a way of using focused ultrasound 
to selectively activate these cells and give them real firepower. We give them the power to explode cancer cells. You see, we discovered that gas vesicles are even more useful gadgets. Under the right condition, the same airfield gas vesicles can be collapsed in response to strong ultrasound pulses. Then the air bubble that is released will oscillate with the ultrasound wave. With each transmitted pulse, each bubble grows and grows until it reaches a critical size and implodes it to itself. In practice, we use these air bubbles in order to focus the ultrasound wave into a single point, enabling us to create small incisions inside the tumor with submillimeter accuracy. In our next project, our agents will face an even more difficult problem. You see, the main problem in treating large solid tumors is the impenetrable cores. These tumors are like fortified bunkers. Our latest experiment showed that our cells can sneak into these bunkers and report back to us using the standard issue gas vesicles as communicators. However, in order to breach these bunkers and demolish them, a simple explosion wouldn't suffice. Therefore, we're engineering a secret agent cells to express therapeutic molecules in addition to gas vesicles. Our plan is to use these exploding gas vesicles in order to propel therapeutics deep into the tumor. These therapeutic shrapnels will enter into the heart of the tumor, destroying it from within. By combining the specificity of biomolecular recognition with the power of therapeutic ultrasound, we can give our James Bond cells precise and effective weapons, greatly increasing their chances of winning the fight against cancer. At the same time, ultrasound imaging gives us a live image of our troops deployment, so we can decide if we want to give this operation a green light or a boat mission without hurting the patient if something goes wrong. In the US, one of two men and one of three women will develop cancer during their lifetime. Many of us know a loved one who's going through this illness. I wish my own mother could have benefited from therapeutics that would protect her instead of harm her during her battle with cancer. Hopefully, with this new generation of personalized therapeutic, we'll be able to give patients a better chance of fighting cancer and beating it without hurting them. And then we can make what seemed to be like an impossible mission more likely to succeed. 